Hello there. You remember last week, I promised to tell you how it happened that these days we have this kind of book and not this kind. Let's look at them more closely. You remember what this one is called? It's called a manuscript. What did that mean? Yes, written by hand. But what about this? How did these words get on this page? They were printed. It was the invention and use of printing and the use of this kind of paper instead of parchment which really brought the book up to date. So let's begin at the beginning. Now some of you will have made potato cuts like these. Now if I cut out the letter S in potato. And use it like this. It's quicker than writing it, especially if I want to write it quickly several times. There you are. Now, in the Middle Ages, people had already realized that rather than writing out each page again and again, it was quicker to carve the page once in a block of wood and use that block to make lots of pages. Well, here is a wooden block with one word cut out. It's a girl's name, Anna. Now, can you see from the capital letter here that it's been carved backwards so that it will print the right way round. Now it be inked and pressed down hard on the paper. Well, they printed pictures in this way too. This is what a finished page would look like. But the difficulty was that when they wanted to do another page of the book, they had to cut another block and they could only use one block for one particular page of one particular book. They discovered that separate letters, like these ones here, there's an I, an N, and a G, could be arranged as one word, like I'm going to do now. Clean piece of paper for this. S. I, N, can't spell of course, I'm putting sign on time, so I'll put a G over that, G, N, nearly wrote sing post. O. Now we use the S again. S. Where's the T? There it is. Now we have signpost with a slight spelling mistake, which I've corrected. And then you can rearrange these particular letters to form other words um, like this. Which we have. Start off with the S again. T. 
aqui. Oh. P. P. I. N. G. There, you see, I've used the P twice. Well now, if instead of using potato or wood, we use metal letters like these ones here, we get a very much better, clearer outline. And that's what a man called Gutenberg, or one of his friends, we're not quite sure which, did use in Germany in the 15th century. This great Bible is exactly like one of the first books he printed, and it's now known by his name as the Gutenberg Bible. But the print looks like handwriting, doesn't it? The first printers tried to make their books look as much like manuscripts as possible, and they still use scribes to illuminate these capital letters. But the presses produced books too quickly for the scribes to keep up. Some books were sold unfinished without the beautiful capitals. I'll show you. Look at this space that the scribes never filled. Well, now, this is an exact copy of one of the first books printed in England. It's called The Game of Chess, and it was printed by William Caxton 500 years ago. How was it printed? Well, let's watch a printer of those days at work. He's setting up the word Caxton. He's taking each metal letter from its own box in the type case. He puts them upside down in order. There's an X. He puts spaces between the letters. Then he puts a thin piece of metal to hold all the letters. Now he's putting the words into the form. With this word, he's setting up the type for four pages. He tightens the last page of type with these bits of wood to keep the type firm and flat.
he puts the paper on here. Now he's putting ink on the ink balls. and rubbing them together before inking the type. This keeps the sheet of paper in place. And those little windows make sure that only the type is printed and the ink doesn't get onto the margin of the pages. The paper is lowered onto the type. And on two small runners like railway lines, it passes under the weight. This forces the paper against the ink type. He pulls twice on the weight, once as the first two pages go under, and again for the other two. Back the type comes. Now he can uncover the sheet and look at his four printed pages. As soon as he had enough printed pages, he could set up the type for the next four pages and start printing that. It was still quite slow compared with the modern press. Let's see how our books are printed today. This machine looks like a giant typewriter, but the operator isn't typing. Here's the manuscript above the keyboard. Each key stands for a letter or space, and as he taps, a tiny hole appears in the paper ribbon, which is unwinding here at the top. This drum below the ribbon tells him where each line ends and how many spaces to put between the words. This is the first stage of changing the author's words into letters of metal type. This is the punched paper ribbon in the typecasting machine. Now, this machine actually makes the type from molten metal. Compressed air passes through these holes and gives a signal to the machine so that it automatically selects the correct mold for each letter wanted. And here are the individual letters, still hot, coming out to form a line of type. Much quicker than in Caxton's time. Close by is the molten metal which is being fed into the machine to make the type. The type is now called the galley and it's taken away to the proof machine. Here the typeface is inked and a proof, that's a rough copy, is rolled off. This will later be carefully read so that any mistakes can be corrected. When the proof has been passed as correct, the galley is split up into pages all of the same size. Page numbers are put in. And checked again. 
then, each page is tied up with page cord. The pages are put in their correct position for printing and hammered. The type must be flat. It's locked securely. Then it's ready for printing. This is the printing press and blank sheets of paper are being loaded into the feeder at the top. Here are our locked pages of type. They're inked and the blank paper fed to them. Inside this machine, the paper turns so that it's printed on both sides. Then it comes out of the other end of the machine. You can see how quickly the paper is being printed, many pages at a time. Finally, this large wooden arm places them on this pile. When the printed sheets are dry, they're put carefully on the folding machine. Each sheet is folded in two. Then it's folded again. And again, till the final fold is the size of the printed page. So now, we have hundreds of copies of one section of a book ready to be put with the other sections to make a complete book. The sections are marked from A to Z. This one is B. Then they're taken to this gathering machine which puts all the sections in the right order. There's section B. As the first section A passes down the line, the next B is dropped on top of it, then C, then D, and so on. So that at the end of the line, you have the pages of a complete book in the proper order. Here, the books are taken off and stacked, ready for sewing. This girl is feeding the sections into the sewing machine. Here's the thread. Below, the needles loop the sections together with a loop stitch, which is cut at the end of each book. The page edges are still folded. They must be cut so that we can turn them. we need now is the cover. The insides of the book are fed into the casing in unit. And machines do the rest. First, the back of the book is curved. Next, a piece of gauze is glued to the back or the spine of the book. Then, the inside covers are glued. And the hard covers, there they are, are pressed to the books. The book is then dried by infrared rays very quickly in this drying unit and comes out ready for reading. And here it is. This is a book on mathematics, but Half an hour earlier, or later I should say, those machines were printing this children's book. 65,000 books a week come from that printing works. Well, 
We've come a very long way from the beginning of books that look like ours today, and an even longer way from the beginnings of writing. That's not really the end of the story, because we are still finding newer and better and quicker ways of printing books. Goodbye. <laughs>